Firebug is an add-on for a highly productive web development in Firefox web browser. Originally started by Joe Hewitt, it is now maintained by the Firebug Working Group hosted on Google. Firebug is an open source software. News, documentation, and support groups are available at the getfirebug.com website, and there is also a light version with limited functionality available for other browsers. You might find this presentation too simplistic, and it is for a good reason. The thing is that Firebug's interface is not cluttered with visual cues of what users can do. It is a good thing, but the features need to be shown to be obvious. An easy way to install Firebug into Firefox 3 is to use the add-ons menu. Open it, search for the Firebug, and install it. After it is installed and Firefox restarted, you are ready to go. There are no preferences to configure. Firebug may be opened as a pane in the browser window or in its own window. It opens in the browser window after clicking on the Firebug icon in the status bar. It can be closed by clicking on the same Firebug icon or in the close button in the top right of the Firebug pane. You can access Firebug as a standalone window via the Tools menu. Otherwise, with a web page opened, select Inspect Element in the right-click menu of any HTML element to get to Firebug. That will open Firebug pane and jump to the clicked elements representation in the HTML tree. Some Firebug panels are more resource expensive than others. The more expensive panels are disabled by default and the user needs to enable them on a per site or global basis. We will enable all panels for the purposes of this demo. The Firebug interface has the panel selection tab menu, object selector and search bar, and context sensitive menus on the right in some panels. The selector bar has the Firebug logo menu in the top left. There, you will find a few general options, web links, and the first highly useful feature, Open with Editor. It allows you to quickly edit local documents, which is great for prototyping and JavaScript ideas testing. Next to the Firebug logo menu, there is the Inspect switch. It will switch you to the HTML panel from any other panel except for DOM and allow for a quick survey of the document. As cursor hovers HTML elements, the inspector will highlight and scroll them into the view in the HTML tree and show there are no boundaries. The right part of the screen will show the style, layout, or DOM properties of the focused element, depending on which tab is enabled. Note that the Inspect Switch mode is different than the Inspect Element menu item available from the pop-up HTML element menu we saw earlier. The Inspect Element menu item will statically select the clicked element. Navigate around the HTML tree to get used to it. Script blocks and style sheets are gracefully expanded. The selector bar will show the clickable path to the element. The tabs on the right will give access to the element-specific information. In the CSS Options tab, you will find very useful options to show computed style and show user agent CSS, so that you are aware of any styling which is infused by the Firefox. We are now at one of the most valuable features of the Firebug. Almost any element property you will see in the Firebug is editable in place. Just click on it, edit, and click outside. The changes are persisted until the next document reload or an AJAX activity, which may override them. To get a feel of it, let's edit a text node in HTML, change the header for example. 
Now add a CSS property. And finally, adjust the layout. To finish the HTML panel review, I will note two extra features. First, you can use the edit switch to edit the full HTML. Second, Elements pop-up menus have the log events item. It is a toggle and it will log all events triggered on the element to the console panel. The console panel receives browser, plugin, and script messages in the main area. It also has the command entry line, which can be switched between the default single line and multi-line modes. The single line mode has the history implemented. To explore the console object, put console at the command line and hit enter. It tells you that console is an object with the firebug property, which value is 1.3.0 or whatever your version is. Note the formatting of the output. All output highlighted in this way and underlined when hovered is active. When you click on it, you will be transferred to the DOM panel and be able to explore the object there. Note that console has the log function. So when you put console.log function call in your JavaScript, the argument will be logged to the console. You can log text or you can log a complex object, which will be possible to inspect later. Let's log an object. Now, let's log an element. The console navigates exceptionally well when offering clickable objects. The console logs any AJAX activity happening after the page load. However, the net panel keeps a much better record of the traffic. The Firebug records all useful information about the traffic, including not only the response itself, but also timing, request and response headers, and cache information where applicable. The GAN chart on the right shows extra useful data in the hover pop-ups about the different stages of network requests. Note that the selector switches in the top line allow to filter network requests by their type. Lastly, Firebug is a great JavaScript debugger. In the script panel, you can add regular or conditional breakpoints add watch statements, and inspect the stack. In this page, the bug inflates and deflates after I click on it. Let's set a couple of watch variables to monitor the process at the breakpoints. First, we will watch the image to find the maximum size it will inflate to. We will also check the level variable to make sure that there is no off by one error. We will also watch the dir variable. As we enter it, we see that there is currently a defined global dir variable. Things like that are good to know when scripting. Simple click on the script line numbers will add a regular breakpoint. Right click will add a conditional breakpoint. Let's set a conditional breakpoint when image just starts deflation. We will check for the direction variable to become negative. Note that the condition appeared in the breakpoint list and is linked to the code. OK, now we click the image. It inflates and stops at the biggest moment. The IMG variable has an inspector attached to it. In addition to the values of watched variables, Firebug gives us this variable. We can look at the stack, which is very simple in this case, and then disable the breakpoint so that the event completes. For continuation, there are four standard options 
continue, step in, step over, and step out. This is it for this demo. You may check out extra plugins for the Firebug, like FireCookie. Also, the new version of Firebug is on the horizon, which will be compatible with the upcoming Firefox 3.1 release. Happy JavaScripting!